vacation today at my primary job so today I'm gonna go spend some time working at Rudy's and uh, we'll see what kind of trouble we can get into maybe some magnetos maybe some carburetors don't know we'll see when we get there though and the plan is to let you guys kind of have a look see at what we're working on today probably be a little bit of time-lapse uh, tearing stuff down maybe a little sandblast cabinet action and then reassembly so stay tuned we got some we got some wrenching for you All right, off to the sandblast cabinet, and we are back. Pressing out the steel core from the original coil that was in the magneto. We're going to reuse the, the steel core, but install a new coil. And we're using the Arbor Press. This is the original coil and steel core. Moving on to the front flange, the mounting flange for the magneto, we're pressing out the bearing race, seal retainer, and seal washer. And they come out as an assembly. We'll clean up the retainer, the bearing race, and discard the seal. And we'll also clean up the seal washer. Now we will recharge the magnet using the charging station that Rudy has. Works very well. I can't really tell you how it works because I'm not, I'm not uh, as technologically and electronically savvy as, as Rudy, but it does work, I know that. So, okay, reinstalling the seal retainer, the seal, the seal washer, and the bearing race. 
you'll have to I have to apologize for my dog in the background. She's getting kind of antsy. So this is my first attempt at narrating my videos. Pressing it in using the Arbor Press. And it's all done. Everything's set in place. Back to the workbench now. We're reinstalling the the magnet into the housing with new grease on the ball bearings that are on the front and rear section of the magnet. Over that, we will install, some, well, first we'll put some grease into both the seal. It's a leather seal that goes on the front and the bearing race. I put a generous amount of grease in there as well. We use a high quality AMS oil grease. Never had a problem with it, so works really well. We'll install that over the front. And I noticed in the video when I well when I was filming the video that I had installed the flange upside down. So that slotted hole that you see under my index and middle finger should actually be at the bottom. So after this portion of the video stops, I actually took that all back apart and reinstalled the flange the proper way. But sometimes when you're filming, you just, you don't really have your head on right, <laughs> or at least I don't. So I apologize for, for doing this improperly the first time, but I can assure you I corrected it. And this, again, this was one of my first times filming in Rudy's shop and working around the camera, which was mounted to my chest. So uh, what I did there was I inserted the key into the keyway. Uh, that's what locks the impulse and magneto drive in place, which is what I'm holding now. Showing the spring and grease cup and the catch balls and sliding it onto the front of the shaft. Again, this all had to come back off to rotate that mount flange 180 degrees because it was upside down. But simple mistake. Uh, that little tab I pointed to, that has to go into a little slot in the front of the magneto drive, or the impulse coupling, I should say. Tighten it down. And when you tighten this down, it will automatically lock the catch paws against the the pin in, inside the front flange there so it won't rotate on you while you're trying to tighten it okay installing a new wire that goes from the condenser down to the junction block we're in the rear of the magneto where the points and your coil wire all come together installing the coil bar into the coil Pushing the coil down into, into place between the fields. Just uh, kind of a slow process, you know, methodical and slow, as long as you do it right the first time. <laughs> but tightening everything down. Uh, you want to make sure that that contact on the top of the coil is facing straight up or vertical. Uh, if it's canted forward or back, it won't make contact with the contact inside the coil cover. So you want to make sure that's facing straight up. Also, you have to ensure that the wire is on the correct side because it's on. if it's on the improper side, it will not reach the condenser when you install it. So installing the wire from the coil onto the condenser and then installing the terminal from the wire that goes down below to the points onto the condenser. Not very, uh, not very forgiving working area for uh, larger hands and fingers, but you can manage, you can get it done. So, tightening up the 
brass nut that secures the condenser and the two wires together. It's also where your kill switch wire connects to on the outside of the magneto. From there we can install the screw that has the condenser clamp into the magneto and that clamps the condenser in place. It also grounds it, grounds the body of the condenser. And I just, I have that napkin underneath it to protect the paint on the front of the flange. Now we're installing the points. But first we have to put the ring terminal on the end of the wire. I leave it off until I slide that wire through the uh, rubber insulator that's inside the magneto body. So I crimp that on, install it over the top of the points, put your lock washer and your nut on. Sometimes it bites you. Again, big hands and big fingers don't mix well with small parts. Okay, we install that all as a unit. Tighten the nut on the junction block. And from there we can install the movable contact or the adjustable contact to the points. So once we install the movable contact, I tighten it snug. I don't tighten it all the way because we have to adjust the points. And on an H4, they get adjusted to 0 0.013. 0 0.013. I believe the Cub, J4 mag, and the Farmall F20, F30, you know, F12, that series uh, is called the F4. Those mags all get set to 0 0.013, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I know the H4 is definitely 0 0.013. Moving on to the rear section which holds the timing gears, the internal timing gears for the magneto. I always grease up the inside of the rotor gear, which is the large gear that drives the rotor itself. And here I'm just pushing grease down into the peg that has a, a small hole to deliver grease down into the lower portion of the shaft that the gear rides on and then I always take and force a little down into the hole of the gear itself and push it down onto the shaft which drives that grease down into that hole and out a side access hole on the lower portion of that peg. Now this is the pinion gear on a left hand rotating magneto which would be for a diesel there is a mark on the back of that rotor gear that says L. So you would align the notched tooth on the pinion gear with the L of the rotor gear. But this is a right hand magneto for a gas tractor. So we would align it with the R notch. There's a small beveled tooth or machine tooth at an angle, it's machined at an angle, and that's the tooth on the pinion gear that you align with the L or R, depending on if it's a diesel or gas tractor, on the rotor drive gear. Again, I, I pack the area with grease, wipe off any excess, then I usually install the cover plate and gasket. Not a permanent install, just loosely so that I can 
rotate the gears around, distribute the grease. And then I'll take the cover off again and pack more grease into that area just to ensure we have a good amount of grease in there. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just adding a little bit more grease. And dog definitely does not want to sit still right now. <laughs> Again, reinstalling that gasket and the cover. Wipe off any excess grease, as always. Turning it one final time to make sure everything turns properly. Installing the screws. Tightening it down. Now this, these gears inside the gear case on the Magneto have nothing to do with the timing on the tractor. So if you're, if you're trying to figure out the timing on the tractor, do not worry about this gear case. Everything in there is set, and it has nothing to do with timing the magneto to the tractor. You can always refer back to Rudy's video for timing a four-cylinder magneto on a four-cylinder tractor. He also has a video on his channel for installing a two-cylinder magneto on a John Deere two-cylinder tractor. Again, we're just closing up the back end here, installing the gasket and the timing gear and cover plate. That pinion drive gear only goes on to the shaft one way, so you have to ensure that there's a, there's a small machine flat spot on that shaft, so you have to ensure that the Pinion gear is facing the correct way in order for it to slide onto that shaft. Installing the screws on the back of the magneto. Everything gets tightened down. All the holes are chased with a tap, cleaned out and chased with a tap so that it we ensure everything goes back together smoothly. Don't have any issues. Once that's done, we can install the rotor. That only goes on one way as well. There's a small peg on the back. Install the distributor cap. And then I'll take and lay down my cloth again so I don't scratch up the flange. We can install the coil cover that has the gasket already installed in the cover right over the top and the four screws that hold it in place. Not much to these magnetos. There are certain things to look for. Obviously, when you look at the bearings, make sure there's no pitting or rust on them. Um, if there are, you can replace the the rollers in the bearings themselves, and then you can replace the races. But you do need special tools to to get the races out of the inside of the magneto body itself. Making sure they're giving them one final turn to make sure everything's closed up and tight. And the last piece of the puzzle is the trap drawer for the condenser. Which of course gets a gasket to prevent any moisture from getting in there. And 
that is it. So now we can take it over to the test bench. Again, I turn it over by hand first to ensure that the impulse is working properly. I rotate it through all four. And my camera frame rate probably doesn't pick up on you know, how quickly the spark jumps. So once we test the impulse, then we can go ahead and turn it on for high speed and check everything at that point. Got good hot spark. Magneto's good to go. So there you have it. Beautiful H4 Magneto. Well, guys, as you can see, we're back at home. The Magneto worked great, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, I can always do more. Like I said, we do a lot of, or I at least do a lot of really common Magnetos, Farmall H4, F4, Farmall Cub, uh, Wyco, two-cylinder for John Deere, uh, Fairbanks Morse, FMJ Magnetos for uh, Alice Chalmers, and a lot of different, you know, stationary power units for like welders out in the field and stuff like that. Um, pretty simple stuff. Rudy takes care of a lot of the of a lot of the really difficult stuff. But if you guys like these videos, let me know in the comments below, and uh, I'll keep bringing them to you. Until then, we got some stuff back for Connors, so stay stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to bed. Thank you.